taking me fishing Hang a sign on the door of my life Tell the world that I've gone missing And I won't be back for a while I'm so tired of only wishing I could leave my trouble behind I want to be from Okay, today folks, I'm going to start out showing you how I make my Tennessee rigs. Um, you can spend, you know, upwards of $40 for some of these rigs. And I'm gonna show you a way that you can make multiple rigs for extremely good price. And it's the way I do it and I found it's real cheap to do. First, you start out with a long arm buzz bait wire. You get them in a pack of 25, I think it is. You get them from Do It Molds. And the price is anywhere from 13 on up to $20 for a 25 pack, I believe it is. What I'm gonna start out by, I'm gonna lock this thing in to my jig tying set up here. And I'm gonna undo that one loop in this wire. Pop it free like so. I'm gonna take my swivel that I wanna use on the end of the thing to hold my bait, slide it down the shaft, lock it in place. Now, I'm gonna take this, I'm gonna flip it over. I'm gonna let that set up in the bottom of this. And I'm gonna clamp onto this long wire right here it holds on, make sure it's at the top of the clamp. I'm gonna fold this back in position. I try to at least, as long as my clamp will hold. Roll this over into position here, the way it was. I'm gonna fold this back up at a 90 degree. Now, I'm gonna hold this tight against this, and I'm gonna roll this wire about three times onto the back onto the same shaft it's on. Now I push it over, try to keep it at 90, try to keep it tight and make a real nice tight roll on there. And now you look, you got a solid roll with several wraps on, not just one, which could potentially pull free. Now I'm gonna take this and come from the side and get as high and tight to this wire as I can. Hold on, don't clip that off. You gotta be careful. These edges are like razor blades. You'll wanna kinda push that and crimp that down with some pliers here later on. And I want you to save this piece for later because we're gonna use it. Now, there is one arm with swivel on it. Now, adding your blades to the arm. A lot of people wanna use these crimps and put it together like this right here. In my opinion, this sucks. It don't work. The crimps, come free and they slide around. You got blades flying everywhere, getting tangled up, twisted around. I like to use a spacer. What do you use for a spacer? I've looked at different, you know, pipings and stuff that you can buy from some of the tackle part stores and stuff. It's expensive and it costs a lot to get it shipped and so on and so forth. Went to my local Hobby Lobby and guess what I found? It looks pretty good. Magic Loops, it's called. It is bracelet. Uh, piping. It's the exact same as you can get from these uh, stores. Half the price and you get a ton of it. Of course, you look at it, well, it's all different colors. That's okay. They got a real light blue, a dark blue, and a red. I'll go into an explanation on the red here in just a few moments. All I do is I'll take my shaft that I just put my swivel on. I'll take a section of this that I've pre-cut to the length that I would like in order to have my blades to work the best. Slide that on, and you know, there you go, you got it. You don't have to use a bead here either, because it, the swivel, the saddle, or whatever you want to call it, the hasp, I can't remember what they call them. These things spin freely up against this plastic. You ain't got no problems at all. Once you get that in there, then you'll just slide another piece on. And of course, you'll have your uh, swivel and your blade on there. And I like to use a split ring swivel, like so. I guess you can see it. I got a whole big old bag of them here. Maybe you can see what I'm talking about. Because you can interchange the blades if you put these on instead of just putting a regular single swivel in a, on it. It's kind of more difficult to do because you're working with an entire swivel and a split ring versus it already having just one split ring. Now that is how I do my wires. Now, red, let me get into what I was talking about with red. red. As far as in the color spectrum, and as far as it's been known, of course, that's the Cajun red wire. That was their 
Cajun red line, whatever it is, that was their big selling concept at one point. In the color spectrum, red will dissipate in water between 10 to 15 feet. So I've tried tying, actually putting some of these on with red. And believe it or not, I think my bite ratio is a little bit better. I don't know if it's because red has simulated the, the uh, contributed to the same as stress with the shad. So as you've seen regular shad, when they get stressed, their mouths and everything will turn red and they'll have a red color to them. I don't know if that's it or not. Of course, now I've got people probably asking, well, man, look how bulky and big that wire looks. In all honesty, I got a 55 gallon aquarium I have and I'll drop baits in it and look at it and everything. This plastic uh, bracelet and coating, it's got the sparkles in it, you know, it's glitter, whatever you want to call it. It actually dissipates and is less visible than this big old wire right here. And I don't know if you can see the tail, I can even see the tail from right here from the way I'm looking. This dissipates the light and kind of spreads out and you can't see this wire any more than you can see this bare wire the wire with the covering on it i think actually it's you can it's less evident anyway there's that and that's how i make my shafts and put these together now let's go to connecting these all right remember that side you cut off what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna snap this swivel off get it out of the way and i can always save the hasp for something for catfishing or something i always do because you know i do all kinds of fishing Right over here in my bucket. Now, here's another neat, cheap, neat, cheap, money-saving idea for clasping these together. A lot of people will just epoxy them together, bend them over. It's, it's, I don't think it's too efficient because when you epoxy them together, they still have the ability to twist and turn inside the head. So, I came up with an idea, actually, I think I actually seen it on another YouTube video, on how to eliminate the the wire twist and everything. What I got here is a rivet. Just an aluminum rivet. You can buy them anywhere. I think Lowe's even carry them. What I'm going to do is I'm going to knock this collar off of this thing. Oh, and smash my finger in the process. That was just lovely. Whoo! Okay. Now, you can see I have my collar. I've just clipped the ring off of this thing. I'm going to insert it from the top side. You can see this is going to be the bottom. Your wires will be coming out in this direction. I'm going to get this pretty close to the top here and back it off just a little bit and I'm going to cut this. When you cut this, be careful because when you cut it, this stuff comes off of here like a dang rocket. You can hear it flying around everywhere. Now, I've got that cut. I'm gonna take a set of pliers and I'm gonna bend this at an acute angle, a little bit more than 90 degrees, so that it sits right on this edge right here. If you can see, I hope you can see that. And that's not going anywhere. That ain't gonna come out. It's not gonna pull free like it does when they're just epoxied together. Now, I've got this done. I'm gonna give you a little simulation here. Say for instance, here's my Here's my three wires with my swivels. And you want to cut them to the length you want, depending upon how you've spaced your blades, how many blades you got. I'm going to take these and I'm going to slide them in from this direction. Push them up. I'm going to do more than just a little 90 degree bend on these. I'm going to try to fold them completely back all the way onto the jig and I'll explain to you and show you why. Now you want them as bent at as sharp as angle as you can and you want them about bent back about the length of the collar. Let me grab them real quick here. And I push them all the way up when I make them a bend because I don't want it. And you can, I could even use my clasp here to get a good square bend on it with no roll. Ninety. Yeah, I'm just gonna do it with my pliers on the next one here. The way I get them all the same. Hold it tight, and I'm gonna bend it. 
at a 90. Same thing on this next one. Roll it tight. Notice I'm not rolling it, I'm bending it with my finger because I want that sharp edge on it. I want a nice sharp corner on it. I don't want a, a smooth roll to it. I want it sharp edged. All right, now I'm gonna pull this down. I'm gonna get them all three in the direction I want them and put this kind of like this. This is how I want it when I'm gonna crimp this. Now, I'm gonna take my crimp and look, it sits perfectly in this collar. I'm gonna get all these wires in one direction. I'll try to at least. Like so, and then I'm gonna push this up, get it how I want it. All the wires pretty much flat and level in one direction. And I'm gonna crimp it. Crimp the kakuku out of it, as you wanna call it. And I'm gonna come down the same spot on down the, and crimp it again. Now, if you look, you have a channel that runs right through here. You see where these are at? I want to fold them straight down into that channel. You can still move them around a little bit, but you, that 90 degree, you should be able to get a good bite on it and fold them straight down into that channel. Once I do that, that's when I'm gonna come over and I'm gonna epoxy them in place. It may take a few crimps and pushes to get them right down in that groove. And once you do, they'll go flat into that into this channel. That's one still sticking out a little bit, but I'll get it here in a second. There we go. Now, what I do now is I'm gonna go get what I'm gonna use to make my head material out of for my, and what I use is, is this two-part putty. It's like a JB Weld almost, and you can actually use JB Weld. I'm gonna take that and mold it into just the amount that I want and I'm going to compress it and shape it into the head that I want. This is a one I just got through doing. Now you can see it. Now, once you get that molded and you get it and it's still soft, what you want to do is you, if you want to put eyes on it, you don't have to. All I do is take my X-Acto knife and I just make indentions on each side to make it to uh, it's where I can inset my eyes. Now, once I get that done, I have my indentions made, I'm gonna let it dry. And uh, you just gotta watch right here in the eyelet, just kinda clean that out to make sure that stuff don't stick. And it, I'm telling you, wet your fingertips while you're molding this, that way they won't stick to it. Cause if not, you're gonna have a mess. And that's, I've learned that my own way, you know. Now, once I get that done, I do not have my eyes in yet. I will heat this, and I will actually dip this in clear blue glitter powder coat. So, all I do is heat that up with a candle or a heat gun or whatever you want to use. And I will dip that and get a powder coated finish on this thing. And I'm telling you, the paint people are using now and the coatings and stuff, they chip, they come apart, and you look like you got a mangled monster on the front end of your rig instead of a fish still. Now you can listen. That's hard as a rock. That's powder coat. That's not going to chip and that's not going to go in I put my eyes in once I get that done, and then I will still, I'll go back, I'll use the 06 coatings, vinyl lure and jig finish. I'll just dip this down in a container, let it drip dry, and I'll use that. And once that dries on, guys, I mean, listen. That's hard as a rock. That's not going anywhere, and that's, that's set for life. You're not gonna worry about chipping, yada yada, so on and so forth. Now, that's how I make my Tennessee rigs. So I hope this video helps, and you can see here's one I got almost finished. I don't have my swivels on here because I'm gonna use split rings and a heavy swivel. What I like using for my swivels on the ends here, I'll use the locking ones like this. Or for my heavier jigs or heavier rigs, I'll just use these Eagle Claw dual shocks or dual lock snaps. These are, you know, I have a little more faith in these than I do especially have more faith in them than I do these just regular old hooks like this for your Tennessee rigs. And you could even use these split rings and just put your hook directly onto the split ring right here versus a swivel snap. That's even more dependable. And that's what I'm actually gonna do on this end. 
So guys, this is how I make my Tennessee rig. I hope y'all enjoyed the video. I hope you could understand. I hope it's clear and I hope I did it right. But any more ideas, y'all just throw my way or whatever. And I'm gonna go over here in a few minutes on another concept I used to catch my really big fish on that I have extremely more luck out of than using a one like this with the four smaller baits on it or three smaller baits on it. All right guys, we'll be back.